Good morning, everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. Good morning at home. Uh, we had some technical difficulties the last couple of weeks, so bear with us, but we're running along pretty good right now. So um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be here today in honor of your triumphant return to Jerusalem. Lord, be with us, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you have done for us. Every good gift forevermore comes from you. And so, Father, open up our hearts, minds, and souls to you today. Help us to know you better than ever before, because the more we love to know you, the more we love you. And the more we love you, the more we love each other. So, Lord, we look forward to the miracles you are about to create. We love you forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Go ahead and greet one another on this glorious, beautiful Palm Sunday. It's great to see all of you. We have an awesome celebration today. Uh, the preschoolers are going to do a little performance during our children's message. So, and then I hope everyone can stay afterwards. All right, I'll get out of the way. Rick, come on up, brother. Good morning again, everybody. Okay, welcome at home, welcome here. If you're a guest, we're so, we're so thankful. Thank God that you're here with us. So, we got the preschoolers singing today. Woohoo! <laughs> That's a big deal. We also got food. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal to me. So, stay for that after service. Fun, food, fellowship. So, April 2nd. That's this Friday, Good Friday service at 6.30 p.m. Can't have Easter without Good Friday. So we'd love you to join us if you're able. April 4th, we're having Easter worship services, three of them. 6.30 a.m. for sunrise, 8.30 and 10. So please join us for that either home. I'm not sure how we're doing the home, but the home probably be at 10. 10 o'clock on the home service. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, join us here at the, at the church service. So. Um, take a moment to review the white insert of the bulletin. There are nursery services available if you need some, and there's a cry room at the back if you want to hang out in there. So, weekly reminders, just like every week, we're so thankful for this. Every Wednesday, we've got 6 to 6.30 prayer time here in the sanctuary, and then Bible studies to follow at 6.30 through 7.30. Every Friday morning, 8 to 8.30 again, prayer time here. Women's Bible study with child care. So, love you to join us. And then every Saturday, I kind of get I kind of get excited about this because it's kind of changed my life. So I'd love you guys to to join us. Bible boot camp, woo! Six forty-five, eight, and nine fifteen. I heard a couple of you guys out clapping. That's that's awesome. So every day, still on the Light of Christ Facebook page, we got the uh, live feeds with Pastor Mo. Get the Bible study, get the child's message in the morning, and then uh, Wednesday morning worship at 10. So we're so glad again you're here. Let's uh, go right into our prayer of confession. Let's all stand. Lord Jesus Christ, I am sorry for the things I have done wrong. I want to be completely honest with you. I ask your forgiveness for those things which are on my heart this morning. Let's continue. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please fill my life with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's continue with our next song, Joyful, Joyful. Oh, my God. 
us, Lord. Thank you, group. You may be seated. All right, now we get to have the preschoolers come on up. So teachers, go ahead and bring them up here. And as they're coming up, I wanted to share a scripture because, um, you know, Jesus was, um, he, he just absolutely loved children. And, you know, in, in, in that day, they kind of thought, right, keep the children away, keep them away from Jesus. He's got important work to do. And Jesus said, don't ever hinder the children from him. He said, don't ever keep the children from him. And then he said things like this. This is from, um, the, uh, from Matthew chapter 11. And he had just had to spend some time with some religious folks. You know what I'm talking about? People who think they're better than other people. Amen. And uh, he said this. I thank you, Father. This is from Matthew eleven twenty-five. 25. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, the secrets of the universe. You've hidden them from these religious people and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. So we have experts in the faith right here today, and they're going to teach us about Jesus. Let's give them the gift of encouragement as they get started. <laughs>
Let's thank God again for the children, the teachers, Jamie and Dean's music. That was awesome, everybody. All right, boys and girls, you can go ahead and head on out to uh, Sunday school, and uh, we'll see you after worship. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great, great day of celebration. About 50 years. Anybody with me? That last song took me back about 50 years. Anyway, it's time for uh, offering. Julie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before I do the offering prayer, I just want to share a little bit. I've been on the board for about nine months now as treasurer, and um, I was thinking about it this morning. Um, taking care of God's house is a lot like taking care of our homes on a larger scale. We have a mortgage, utilities, repairs, a lot of the same types of things. My favorite part of our meeting each month is at the end when we look at what the total donations were from the congregation, we take 10% of that and pass it out to great charities in our area. So this month, um, where the money went, we went $1,000 is going to the Dream Center, 1130 is going to Matthew Crossing's Food Bank, and then $500 is going to help our daily bread. They do those great little booklets that are available in the Narthex for free, and they're really nice to have at home. So I just want to share that with you. Our church finances are open. If anyone ever has questions, uh, please let me know. Please pray with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our blessings and the bounty we have. Please help us to give faithfully and joyfully to the work of your church, and help us, Lord, to make great decisions in how to use those funds. In Jesus' name, amen.
be to God. Thank you, group. All right, now's the time for the word. Take out your Bibles. Let's all stand. And Jason is going to share the reading for us today on this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. The reading today is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Here ends the reading. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jason. Let's pray. Father, open up our hearts and minds. Lord, you love us perfectly. You know us a billion times better than we know ourselves. You know our future, and you know why you brought us here. And you have a word for each of us. So, Father, get me completely out of the way. No one needs to hear from me. Everyone needs to hear from you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Palm Sunday. The entrance, the beginning. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He'd been to Jerusalem many times before, but now it's different. Now he is coming in with a royal entrance. It is on. The confrontation is about to happen. And his disciples must have been thinking, it's about time. It's about time. Three years, we've been traveling throughout the country, sleeping outside. It's about time. Because Jesus is the Messiah, and he's going to take out Pontius Pilate and the Romans, and we're going to finally get our country back. And we, as the disciples, get to be in his administration. All of our work, all of our sacrifices are about to be worth it. All these people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And only one person knew what was really about to happen. And that's Jesus. Amen. And Jesus knows as he's riding into town, he is not here to fight Pontius Pilate. He is there that day, that week, to die for us all. And a lot of the people who are shouting Hosanna on Sunday will be shouting crucify him on Friday. And yet he still loves them. He still loves us. Because Jesus has come to show us that you know what? Love wins. Love really does win. The world doesn't know anything about it because the world is just so angry, so self-righteous, so looking at the speck in other people's eyes. And Jesus is like, really? How's that working for you? How about this? How about take the plank out of your own head and then you will see clearly how to truly help truly help other people. I don't know why people don't get close to me, Lord. Amen? Loving them all. 
loving us all. Because his sacrifice on Good Friday, and I hope everyone can come back on Good Friday, because all we need is his love. And Good Friday tells us precisely who God is. God is love. And he is the power of the universe. And love wins. And don't listen to what the world says. Because they don't know. They don't know. The only way we could be saved was through his sacrifice. He knew what Holy Week was really about. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn us. The world condemns us. Amen? We condemn ourselves. You know, when Jesus says pray for your enemies, guess what? Sometimes we're our worst enemy. How many perfect people are there that have ever lived? There is a Savior, and I'm not him. Amen? And neither are you. There is a Savior who transforms this world, and I'm not him. And neither are you. But he loves us, and he died for us. And if we will learn how to follow him and surrender our lives to him, we will stop chasing miracles and allow him to make us miraculous. Or we can just keep chasing miracles the rest of our lives. Keep trying to chase blessings instead of becoming the blessing he created us to be. We are children of light. Satan doesn't want us to know that. It's about surrender and submission to the Lamb of God who is knocking on the door of every heart. Do you think he's going to stop? Do you think he's ever going to quit on you? He's ever going to give up on the people in your life? The only way he'd do that is if he stopped loving us. Is he ever going to stop loving us? Somebody say, no, he's not. No, he's not. He came to save us. Save us from whom? Save us from what? Jesus did not come to defeat Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He came to earth to defeat sin, death, and the devil. That's why he's here. That's why he came. That's why he died. To defeat sin death, and the devil. So last night, my beautiful bride and I went out to eat. It's a lot less expensive now that the kids are out of the house. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We may go out more. I don't know. But I asked her, what jumps out at you about Holy Week? And she said, Jesus, praying in the Garden of Gethsemane on Thursday night, asking the Heavenly Father to change his mind. I mean, that's an astonishing portion of scripture, right? I mean, Jesus, he knew, and he had been telling his disciples, I got to go, I got to die. But even up to the very last, it's like, Lord, please, if there is any other way we can do this, please. This is what he says, Luke 22, 39 through 44. Read this with me. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. So he brought his three closest friends, the disciples, Peter, James, and John, said, Pray here, right? I kind of need that encouragement. I don't need it, but it's nice to have. Just pray. And what do they do? Fall asleep. I tried to stay awake, Lord. I just couldn't. I'm really tired. I'm sorry. They had no idea what was coming. They had no clue what was coming. They probably didn't believe Jesus could die after they saw what he was able to do, bringing people back from the dead. Is anybody, nobody could kill him. He is God incarnate. He is. He's bulletproof. And then Jesus says this, read this with me, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Did you get that? 
You know there's actually a medical condition where under immense stress, the capillaries underneath our skin will burst and the blood comes out of our pores. It's like we're sweating blood. That's where Jesus was. This is what we're talking about. This is the love that is ours in Christ Jesus. And it's a love the world doesn't know anything about. We'll get into what makes his love different. Great drops of blood. Please, Father, let's find another way. But not my will. Thy will be done. And an angel came and strengthened him. And it's a great model, as in all things, our Lord, a great model for our own prayer life. God wants to hear what's on your heart, but in every prayer, not my will, thy will be done. Thy will be done, Lord. If we need to go through this, then I know you're going to give me the strength to go through this, to walk through this. But we're not running, and we're not afraid, but we're going to face everything in our lives, because I will do all things through Christ, who gives me strength. Amen? We are not alone. Ever. And this is what Paul, who used to hunt Christians and try to destroy the church because he thought he was serving God. That's how good Satan is. He gets people believing they're serving God when they're actually serving him. And this is what he said. For our sake, God our Father made Jesus to be sin. He became sin itself, who knew no sin, that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. This is what God's love is. It's called grace called grace. It's so far beyond human understanding of love. It's not that he overlooked our sin. God hates sin. Why? Because sin is what separates us from him and from each other. If we would all just obey him, amen. How many things did God tell Adam and Eve to stay away from in the garden? One thing. How did they do? Not so good. There's something in our human nature that says, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Don't tell me anything. Even though you love me and you've got a perfect plan for me, I think I've got a better plan. I'm going to go my own way. I was like, I love you. I gave you free will. Knock yourself out. But I'm always here. I'm always ready. Always knocking. When you're ready to give up religion. <laughs> And allow him to develop the relationship. I mean, think about this. The entire sin of the entire world. Yes, Jesus was concerned about the physical. But I think what he was a million times more concerned with was to take all of our darkness into his soul. Imagine that. Think about all the darkness in your life, what you have experienced, the guilt, the shame, the anger, the hatred, the self-loathing. He took all of it from every one of us, from everyone who will ever live, and he took it into his own soul. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have been like for our Lord. Here he is, eternally, right, co-eternal with the Father, Son, Spirit, like this, and he is about to go from that to... Because sin separates us from God, and he was about to take it all into himself, so he becomes the being who is most separated from God that has ever lived. Anyone ever asked you who's the most sinful person who's ever lived? That's easy. His name is Jesus. Because he took all of our sin. And so maybe we stop looking for other people to understand what we're going through and just ask Jesus, you already know because you paid the price for it. You experienced it in your soul. You know the darkness in me because you took it into yourself. That's how much you love me. You know my self-loathing. I don't need to explain anything to you. Just help me, Lord. I love you. Yes, Lord. You look at this. Read this with me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. That we have all, everything from heaven is ours through Jesus, through what he has done. Praise be to God. Grace and truth. So we have this immense 
just mind-blowing, life-transforming love, grace of God. But what's the truth? The truth is you're worth it. The truth is you are worth the blood of Jesus. That's your true value. And if you try to find your value anywhere else, get ready to be disappointed. That's how much you're worth is the blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ. And that sets us free. God loves me exactly the way I am. Amen. Now, would I rather have people like me? Yeah, probably. But you do you. And here's the thing. When we understand the only love we truly need is from our Heavenly Father, now we can truly love each other because we don't need anything from each other. Amen? I'm not using you for my ego needs. I mean, on my worst days I am, but when I'm walking with the Lord, we just get to love each other. We receive his love and we pour it out. Imagine what our families would look like if we could learn that one thing. All you need is the love of Jesus Christ. Let him fill you, and then the first ones to receive the blessing of Christ in you will be your family. And you will love them like you've never loved them before. But it's all the same issue. Will we submit? That's the question. Had enough? Not yet, Lord. All right. How about now? Nope, not quite. How about now? Yeah, I am so tired of my life. And I'm ready to give you a chance, Lord. Like, perfect, beautiful. Let's get after it. Who needs God's grace? Is it just a guy in the back, maybe a woman over there to the left? Who needs God's grace? Everybody. Everybody. We're all sinners. We're all doing the best we know how. But this world destroys our spirits. But God loves us so much, he did not leave us alone. He sent his son here to die so we can live. Praise be to God. See, this is a grace image. God's riches at Christ's expense. The upper left, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Our Lord Jesus on the cross is praying for us all. That's the most perfect love the world will ever know is Jesus on the cross. When he says it is finished, the justice of God has been met. All of our sins completely paid for. 2,000 years before we were more, even born. Amen? And everybody else's sins that's going to sin against us, that's been paid for as well. i got to teach that person, right, a lesson. Good. Teach them a lesson about God's eternal grace and love for them. And forgive them as you have been forgiven. Receive his love and just pass it on. Hold nothing against anyone. Pray for everyone. Bless everyone. God's love is the greatest power in the universe. Nothing can stand up to his love. And then, of course, is Jesus dead? He is alive. He is alive. He took all the sin of the entire world into his heart, mind, and soul, and he wasn't even down for 48 hours. He died on a Friday afternoon, Sunday morning. They went for the final burial to bless, you know, to, to prepare the body for final burial. And so where did he go? Who took him? You know, people will say, every time you sin, Jesus cries out from the cross. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Now, he'll correct us, but he is alive, and he is the power of the universe. Why do you think Satan wants us to make it about religion? <laughs> or about entertainment? <laughs> or about being a good person? Or about anything other than Jesus himself? It's just Jesus, friends. It's always just been Jesus. Is any of this religion? Any of that? Because at the end, he's holding his hand out to each one of us saying, you ready? Come on. Let's go. We got work to do. You're not here by accident. God's going to use you to shine your light into this world and help so many people. That's why we're here. Look at what Jesus says. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Pretty much the only qualification is that you're worn out. You're just done. <laughs> you just, all right, Lord, I'm ready to give you a chance. Like, good. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from him, for I'm gentle and lonely in heart. People are like, I don't, I, I'm never going to change. Well, then you can't follow Jesus. 
If we're going to follow Jesus, we're going to change. Amen? But here's the change. More love, more hope, more joy, more peace, more patience, more kindness, more gentleness, more strength, more wisdom. For I am gentle and humble in heart, lowly in heart, and you will find what? Rest for your souls. Jesus is the only one who can stop the battle within us. We all want to live the lives that God created for us, but we're all sinners. And we don't even understand why we do what we do most of the time. That's why when we call out to Jesus and say, Lord, please help me, he said, excellent. He has already paid the price for all that. All that darkness, he owns it. Talk to Jesus about it. He'll take it out. He'll bring you peace in your souls. Thank you, Lord. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Now, this came up a couple different times the last few weeks. People are like, which yoke are we talking about here? Egg yoke? So Jesus likes his eggs over easy? Is that what he's saying? I don't really understand the scripture. He's like, no. <laughs> it's, right, and yoking animals together, right? And they work together. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, he's saying, we, each of us, have work to do. We're not here by accident. We matter to God, and when we yoke up with Jesus and learn how to listen to him and surrender our lives to him, and he leads the way, and 99.9% .9 of the pull is him, so we're just with the Lord, loving and serving people the rest of our lives. It's not an egg yoke. No. There's work to do. But when we're yoked with Jesus, when we're doing what he wants, the way he wants it done, it's easy. It's effortless. Because it's his power, not ours. And when we start getting off track, he takes away his power, and then we're worn out. We're like, what did I do, Lord? It's like, you tried running ahead of me. How many of you know Jesus never ran anywhere? So if we want to follow him, we probably need to slow down a little bit. Okay? How can we, who are sinners... Be yoked with Jesus, who is perfect. Won't we be pulling in different directions? Yeah, for a while. Till we learn that he's stronger than we are, and it just doesn't work to pull against him. Will Jesus give in and begin following us, saying, you know what, Mo? I want to teach you how to love people, but you want to love stuff, so I'll just go with you. It's like, no, he's not going to give in. Will he give up on us? Never. Thank you, Jesus. He will never quit on us. Maybe that's why he brought you here today. Because you needed to hear how important you are to him. I mean, what, how, do you, how do you explain, about four months ago, we had one men's Bible study group on Saturday mornings. Now we have three. How do you explain that? Because I think a lot of people are coming to the end of themselves saying, I am ready to give God a chance. I am ready to get serious with God and see what he does. Come one time, guys. Ladies, give him the holy boot. On Saturday morning, 645, 8, 915, just come one time. What do I have to do? You want me to come pick you up? I'll come pick you up. Come on Wednesday night, 630, 730. All we do is get in the word of God and we listen to Jesus. That's it. Maybe it's time we stop listening to the world. And start listening to our Lord. Oh. So how can we learn to submit reprioritize our lives and work with Jesus, become people of grace, which the world is in huge need of, instead of working against him. There are two primary ways. One is we listen to him. It was not anything made that was made. In him was what? Life. And the life is the light of men. We are created to be beings of light in a world of darkness. But God loves us enough to give us free will and to be patient and to be patient, but don't think he's ever going to stop knocking. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Can't. Can't. One on one prayer time. Jesus says, right? But when you pray, this is Matthew uh, 6 6. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So that can be at your house. Just go in and talk with him. It could be at work. Close the door. Talk with him. It could be in your car. Turn off everything and just talk to the Lord. All he wants is you. What do you want me to do, Lord? Don't worry about that. Just spend time with him. That's it. Pastor um, 
Richard Wormbrand, who founded Voice of the Martyrs, this is a man who was an angry atheist, but it didn't bring any healing to his heart. It broke his heart because he wanted to find, he wanted to discover a God of love, if such a God even existed. And this was his prayer. Listen to this prayer. He said, God, and I don't even believe you exist, but if you do, it is not my job to find you, but your job to reveal yourself to me. And God did. <laughs> it's a great story. And next thing you know, he was telling everybody about Jesus and his love, and no one could stop him. He was 14 and a half years in communist prisons, 13 years in isolation because of his love for Jesus. And they had to keep changing the guards who took care of him and watched him because they kept uh, surrendering their lives to Jesus too. There is nothing in this world more powerful than the grace of God. That's why we're here to know, to receive his grace, his love. And pour it out to everyone, starting with our families, of course, but to everyone. So this one-on-one -on -one prayer time, right? We, we put this in your um, bulletins today, and, you know, I was thinking, take a, take a picture, right? You're watching it on the... Uh, live screen where they screenshots is that what they do these days i don't know i'm just fi i just figured out the other day you can flip your camera around on your phone that was so exciting to me like, <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad but it wasn't in the too distant past take a picture of it right you've got 10 minutes open it up after adoration start with just adoring god he's worthy of all of our praise might as well get used to it we're going to be in his presence and the thing that comes out of us when we're in god's presence is adoration because he is worthy of all of our praise he is perfect he is beautiful he is everything so adoration confession we'll get to confession real quick uh, and read rededication thanksgiving thank god for everything in your life everything just start making a list of being thankful you want to be happy be thankful we have so much to be thankful for we're saved by grace. Our heaven, heaven is our home. He's given us every ability. He's given us our family. He's given us this day. He's given us the sunshine, the birds. I mean, every good thing. Thank him. And try to be depressed. I double dog dare you. Live a life of thanksgiving and try to be depressed. Intercession. Just pray for everybody. Pray for everybody. It gets our minds out of ourselves, and we start lifting other people in love to the throne of our Heavenly Father. What's a more loving thing we can do for others than praying for them? And then supplication. If at the end of that list, you still have something on your heart that you want to bring to the Lord, excellent. But chances are, you won't even remember what you came to him in the first place for. Because you know he's got everything taken care of. He's your Father. He's your Father. So back to confession and rededication. Because I believe this actually is the doorway into the new life. When, we, when I stop confessing your sins, because every time I bring your sins before the Heavenly Father, I get crickets. I confess my wife's sins to my Heavenly Father. is like, I'm not interested in hearing about her sins at all. When are you going to get real with me, Mo? When are you going to start talking to me about what's really going on in your own heart? Yes, Lord. Look at what he says here. If we say we have no sin, we what? We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus has already paid the price for my sins, so I don't have to right, pay for them, but to acknowledge them and to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I've, I've taken my, my, my family for granted. I'm sorry how little time I spend thinking of you and thanking you. I'm sorry that everything seems to get in the way of coming to church or Bible study or whatever it is. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Think about what Jesus had to do to save me and what I need to do. He had to die on the cross. All I knew is open my heart to him and say, please forgive me, Lord. Make me brand new. And he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? That means all that guilt, all that shame, all that darkness is gone. Is gone. When we stop confessing other people's sins and say, you know what, Lord? Just deal with me. Because I know you love me. You've already paid the price for my sins. I want to say I'm sorry. And I got a short story, and then we'll close. So years ago, um, I just loved golfing. Grew up golfing. My senior year in high school, I 
Made it so that every afternoon I could go out golfing. I just loved golfing. And then I got married. I golfed a little less, but still quite a bit. And then our twin boys came along. And I still golfed a lot. My one day off, and I'm taking seven hours out of that day to go golfing. Good idea? Bad idea? Probably could do better. Yeah. So anyway, I'm out golfing one day, and it was like the Lord just took all my happiness. I, I was not enjoying golf anymore, and I'd had a horrible front nine, and I stepped up on the back nine, uh, the tenth hole, and I crushed this drive. I mean, just crushed it. It was going down, and it was hooking in, and I knew that area of the, 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 uh, the, the fairway. It was rock solid. It was going to hit, and it was going to be like a, like a cart path. I mean, I was like, man, that's going to be one of my best drives ever. And all the guys who'd had to put up with me for the first nine, they were like, well, maybe he'll start playing decently because he's no fun to play with when he's not. And they're like, nice, drive, that was phenomenal. I'm telling you, that thing hit, bounced straight right, and went right into a sand trap. And I remember this like it was yesterday because I looked at that, and I just started to laugh. And I said, you know what, guys? I think it's time for me to go home. Can one of you pick up my golf ball? And I'll see you again next week. No one argued with me. I think they were happy to see me go. <laughs> Amen. And on the way home, my Heavenly Father dealt with me. It's like, what do you think, Skippy? What do you think? You're spending seven, eight hours on your day off away from your little boys you prayed and prayed and prayed for me to give you a family i give you a family and you're golfing on your day off i just want to get this clear all right lord no you're right you're right by the time i got home i knew i was done golfing at least until the kids got older and i called the guy who put it together that afternoon i called him that afternoon and left a message and said, you know what, thank you for all you've done and for including me, but I'm not going to be golfing for a long time. Do you think I regretted it? Somebody say, not for a second. Not for a second. Not for a second. Because God's ways are better than my ways. And praise God for the change that only he brings. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Who needs grace? Everybody the world needs grace because we're all sinners amen maybe we got to cut each other a little bit of a break because we're all sinners father forgive them they do not know what they're doing you know how much god loves you <laughs> jesus from the cross is praying for us it is finished all of our sins are paid for satan doesn't want us to know that it's done jesus is not dead he is alive and every one of us, every morning, he's like, you ready to get to work? Because we got a lot of really important work today. And it's all grace. May this be the holiest holy week of our entire lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are who you are. And Lord, help us to understand Satan doesn't want us to know who you are because if we did, we, we would rush to you every day and just spend time with you because you're perfect, you're, you're love, you're everything. And you're so patient with us. And not one of us deserves it, and yet it's ours all the same. So Lord, we want to take just a few seconds and, and just express to you from our hearts how much we love you and how thankful we are for you and, and that you've never quit on us and you never will. So we want to thank you for our families, our children. Help us to be models of a godly life. Help us to grow in our relationship with you so we can help them understand how precious and beautiful they are too. There's nothing more important. We love you, Father. We love you forever. As Jesus gave his life for us, we give our lives back to you right now. In his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing that prayer. Thank you.
Thanks for joining us, everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. Don't forget about the food outside. Love all of you guys. If you guys have any questions you'd like to ask, like any of us guys that go to this Bible study and we're all kind of wigged out about it, talk to us. We'll tell you. So anyway, let's close in our last song, Stand in Your Love. tells us that perfect love casts out fear. Where does perfect love come from? Just let him love you this week and then shine your light. Now, let's go into the world to love and serve the Lord. Have a beautiful week. God bless you all.